So what's the worst financial um, state I've got in the Philippines? Uh, I'll be honest with you, the lowest I've been is probably 20,000 pesos. Um, I've had consistent income though, which means I can s sustain that. I've also been able to develop it into something bigger over a period of time. That's why if you knew me back from 2007 onwards, you would actually see some of the stuff I used to get up with because I, I'm constantly trying to make money, constantly. Um, now, was I broke at any of those times? The answer was no, but it could have been if something went badly wrong. But generally it didn't. Um, I also, if I was financially tight, I still had enough money for a plane ticket. Because I, I wouldn't say I'm in a unique position, but I will do whatever it takes to make things work. So when I've been um, short of cash, I've just gone back to the UK and got some work. Um, now it's just people go, oh yeah, but you know, you, you've had all these fantastic jobs or whatever. The jobs I do aren't fantastic, it's just because I have a lot of engineering knowledge. Um, but also, the bits you haven't seen, when I first went back in 2008, um, I'd got rid of my car and everything before I'd left the UK. So I'd gone back into the one horse town of Worcester, uh, where they pay minimum wages, Their the job opportunities are pretty pants. Um, so you have to work your way out of that hole. You know, this is where it, it sort of separates me from a lot of other people. Uh, for example, my brothers, they, they're still not working. You know, they've, they've had bits and pieces, but nothing consistent. I go back, what do I do? First thing I do is look for work. I, I go out and I do about, give my CV to about 40, 50 people contact every person I know, contact companies, um, look wherever I can for job opportunities. And I get this job which is basically uh, jet washing off Eurofighter parts. And they're, they're the front wing parts, basically taking the, they've come out of the uh, metal mold or whatever. I don't do injection molding on that, so I'm not too familiar on what they actually do with them. Um, but it's basically taking a jet wash and just running it down with this high injected cleaning fluid which just takes all the crap that has been uh, put on it when it was basically forged or whatever um, for 16 hours a day. Now that was seven days a week, 16 hours a day and what they don't tell you because this is what this is why a lot of people go, get a bit unstuck with agencies is they tell you all oh, the jobs permanent or whatever, but the reality is it's going to finish within weeks. Um, they lie to get you to go to work. But myself, I assume they lie. I'm not assuming they're going to give me a permanent job. I'm not assuming it's long term. I'm assuming the work's going to run out. I need enough money for a car. Once I get a car, I can get to Birmingham. When I get to Birmingham, I can get work. I can get into my own industry. So that's what I focus on. So three weeks in. Bang, work's finished. What have I got? I've got, what's that? About, I don't know, it was 300 and about less than a thousand pounds. I buy a car, cost me 300 pounds. I buy the car insurance, this car tax. I'm on the road, I've got some money for fuel. I then contact the agencies that deal with construction and stuff. They find me this job that is up in Lincoln, miles away, three hours drive each way, but it's paid for when I leave the house. So I go to Lincoln, I'll do eight to 10 hours in Lincoln in a day. I do a, get up early, do a three hour drive there, three hour drive back, and I'm getting paid 16 hours a day. I do that for two, three months at a time. Then once I've got enough money, the work's gonna run dry. Like I said, agency work, it goes dry. But I'm looking for that. I don't care. I don't want a company saying, well, Matt, you let us down because you quit last week. I want a company that just says, look, the work's finishing next week. Thanks for everything you've done. And I'm happy. I'm okay. Get my flight booked. I'm back to the Philippines. 
that's how I do it when things go bad. Um, now, the thing is, if you're good at doing it and will finish all the contracts, you will find every time you go back to the UK or wherever you're going, the agencies love you. You don't let them down. You'll say, look, I'll work until it's finished, da da da. So you get the best work. And you'll continue to get the best work. You know, if I go back to the UK now, I can contact the agencies. In fact, one of the guys I used to deal with about 10 years ago emailed me today saying I'm with my own new company. Will you come and work for me? And do you know other people that work, you know, want me to either organize their staff or will um, have people, you know, do I know other people like myself? So the fact is, it's not always perfect. It rarely is. What I do is I calculate against it. When I had that, where I had no car, etc., what do I do next time? I got myself insured on my brother's car. I pay to hire his car off him. At the same time, I will um, put new tires on it and stuff like that. I'll help him upgrade his car. Um, when I say pay him, it's not at a higher rate. It's actually just like I'll pay his insurance or something, just in case somebody thinks they're clever, try and say, oh, well, you know, it's illegal to hire private vehicles or it, it's not actually a hire it's making payments on the actual car itself so the point being is you calculate against it you know when I said about the Typhoon high end I had three months money left maximum that is three months for April and the kids in the Philippines and I had money for me to get set up in the UK so if I hit the UK and couldn't find work for a month it wouldn't matter because I would find one in a maximum of another four weeks. So whatever happened, we would have stayed afloat. And that's where all the planning comes in. And I've heard some stuff today where it sort of makes my blood boil a little bit, um, where people are knowing they're doing something wrong. And then they, they contact me for a bit of reinsurance. And I'm like, well, you can carry on the way you are or if you want to know the truth, you're quite happy to sit there. But if I'm going to tell you, you've got to listen to it. Because I don't want you coming back to me in a couple of months' time crying that it's all gone pear shaped. Um, because you get tired of it. You get tired of helping people that won't help themselves. When you, you say, look, I found out that somebody's cheating or whatever. And you go, yeah, I can understand that. Matt, but it's like, there's not that. There is no but. Uh, I can't give you that because the fact is, I know where this leads because it happens over and over again with the Philippines. You're going to end up losing everything, etc., and you'll be sat there going, I don't know how this happened. Well, you do because I told you several months earlier. Um, so prepare for everything, and that's the easiest way to do it. And I know some people say, oh, well, I don't know if I need a ticket. I don't know. Money buys everything. Keep a cash flow. Keep it hidden away. Keep it accessible with a card that nobody's got the pin for. Uh, one of these, uh, what do you call it? The um, prepayment card things. Keep one of those hidden away with nobody's got the pin. That's got money on there for emergencies. Enough to buy you a ticket home. Enough to whatever it is and do not use it for going out or something stupid it's for one thing emergencies only nothing else do not use it for anything else because when you reach that bit rock bottom you need that get out of free card get out of jail free card um, because if you don't when it hits that rock bottom you're stuck there and I can tell you of multiple expats that are literally stuck in the Philippines because the embassies won't help. They couldn't care less. They've left them there. Um, there's several nationals that are stuck there. There's some of them where they said, well, you've got to get your uh, passport because their passport's been stolen by their partner. And it's like, well, I can't get one. Well, you'll have to buy one. But I haven't got any money. Yeah, but once you buy one, we can do that. But I can't buy one. You just go around these loops. And it's like, get work. You can't because you have to have a company that can get your work permit. How do you get your work permit? Well, you're going to need your passport. And by the way, now your um, visas and everything are out of date as well. So you've got fines to pay. So 
you can see this can spiral right down very quickly. So keep that money separate. That's what I do now. There's money sat in the UK, there's money sat in the Philippines, there's money sat in Spain. They're all different budgets for different things. But whatever happens, there's money there. And I can't stress it enough. You need to organize yourself. If you don't do it normally, you're going to have to learn because if you don't, you're going to have some serious problems. And I know everybody wants to do go to the Philippines and I know everybody wants this amazing dream, but you have to work at it. Don't assume everything's going to be fantastic. You've met this woman online or whatever. You get there, you're going to get married and get a house together. And you don't know any of their background yet. Protect yourself first and then deal with everything else later. Alright, thanks for watching.